Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the sixth tutorial on using Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind musical instruments. In this tutorial we'll look at the Tuning Wizard, um, a separate application included in WI Designer for creating tuning files. If you recall um, from the prior tutorial, a tuning is a set of components, a set of notes that have a name, a frequency, and a fingering. Each one of those components are reusable. You might want to create them and use them in multiple tunings. Um, and so that is what the tuning wizard was designed for. So let's bring it up and get started. Uh, in this tutorial, it's actually a walkthrough, we're going to create a tuning from scratch. So to get oriented, uh, let's open a tuning file that we showed in the last tutorial. So a tuning file with a name and a description and a set of notes, a list of notes that include a name, a symbol, a frequency, a fingering and a weight and in this interface we saw that we could um, edit all of these these components but we were somewhat limited in the other things we could do we couldn't add a note to this we couldn't delete it although we could um, make it so that we didn't see it by setting its weight to, to zero. We couldn't do anything organized with the frequencies, and that's what the Tuning Wizard was designed for. So let's open it up. Under the File menu, it's New Tuning, and the tooltip is Use the Tuning Wizard to create a tuning file from Notes and Fingerings. That's what we're going to do. So here's what a Tuning Wizard looks like. It has seven pages. The first page is just a brief explanation of what all the components we use to create a tuning are, um, the, the pages that we use to create them. Please give this a read so you're, you're oriented a little bit. What we're going to do today is we're going to create this tuning pretty much from scratch. So this tuning comes from Clint Goss's Flutopedia page and we'll give a reference to that at the end of the tutorial. Um, lots of good stuff on Flutopedia. I, if you haven't seen it before, I encourage you to browse through its entirety. We're going to create a five-hole flute and for uh, just time constraints, we're only going to make it one octave we're going to just do the pentatonic minor um, notes and so those are highlighted here in yellow. The root, minor third, fourth, fifth. Um, we're going to put in the sixth, the minor sixth, uh, the minor seventh, and the octave. So, other than the, than the second, this is a minor scale. Pentatonic minor plus one um, is, is what we're going to do. So, we'll keep that for reference. So, let's see if we can fit everything in here on this, this screen. And... Let's start start it off, and we're going to do it. We're going to add one bit of complexity to it. We're going to make this for a G flute. So the first page that comes up is scale symbols, and in this you could type symbols um, from scratch. As I said in the last tutorial, I have a preference for scientific symbols, and so let's load the full scientific set. We could load it from XML, or we can load it from uh, the selections here. So scientific symbols. I said we were going to do um, a G minor scale. Uh, a G scale, G major scale, has one sharp. A minor, the G minor scale has two flats. 
And so we're just going to load the scientific symbols with flats. And here we are, all 11 octaves of it. We're going to make a G4 flute, so let's just select the, G, the notes that we're interested in for G4. So here's the first note. And I'm just going to, to hit the scroll bar and go down. And we're going to select notes more than, than one octave just for reusability. And typically you can go, well, let's go, go five semitones above the octave. It's unlikely that most people can make flutes that play those notes, but again, we don't have to use them all. So I'm now holding down the shift key and clicking C6. And it selects everything from the, the G4 to the C6. And now we have a number of choices here, what we want to do with selections. I'm going to delete all the unselected cells so that all we have left are the selected cells. And I do that, and you can see that I have um, G4 through C6. That's perfect. If I want to save this for re reuse, and let's do that, um, I'm going to give it a name and let's call it um, G4, and we've used all the notes, so let's do call it chromatic symbols. And give it a description that's useful and scientific symbols for a G4 chromatic scale. And we can do a save. Now this is a save as, so it's not going to ever overwrite unless you tell it to, um, the file that you started with. So I click the save button um, and I'm going to navigate to my symbols directory. And this is the directory structure that came with the program. These are sample files. Open that up and you can see that it came with three sample files. And I'm just going to name this um, G4 chromatic and scientific and we do a save and now I can bring this up forever and ever more for example if I can load an XML file there it is scientific symbols um, um, G4 chromatic scientific and I double click that and and we've reloaded them so that's how you create a symbol set create any symbol set that you want I would recommend at this stage that you create a chromatic symbol set and you'll see why in the next few steps the next page is a musical temperament so I'll read the first page to get a description of what a temperament is um, I'll bring one up and, and then talk you through it. And there's two of them that are, are that come prefab with the program. Um, a 12-tone equal temperament and a 12-tone just intonation. We're going to do an equal temperament. So what a, a temperament has, a, a root note, which has... Um, a frequency um, let's call it one and then each subsequent note um, have a frequency that's a multiplier of the root frequency so that's definitely a fundamental root note um, based um, this is the one for equal temperament and we've loaded um, one octave so that goes from one to two the frequency doubles in an octave um, there's one octave, and it doubles again, that's the second octave, and it doubles again, that's a third octave. We're just going to leave that um, as is and use it, but we've loaded it here. So let's go to the next page. And this is the page that we combine 
um, the symbols that we've used, that, that, we've, that we want to use, and we can start at this page if we've already load, if we've already created an XML file with those symbols. And we could start there if we already have intervals, which in, in this case we already have, but let's just pull them in from the prior pages. So load it from page and load it from the temperament page. Now I'm going to choose all of the notes um, on the symbol list. So I've, I've just clicked into the, into the symbol list pay, uh, table. Now I'm going to hit Control A. You can select the, the symbols you want in all the usual various ways. I'm just going to collect the whole table. And now this is a drag and drop interface. Um, I hold the mouse button down on any one of these rows that are selected and then just drag them. You can see it doesn't want to drop them anywhere. Uh, it doesn't want to drop them there, but when it goes to a place it can drop them. The symbol, uh, the cursor changes. I let go and we've just dropped all of those symbols in this table. I'm going to do the same thing with the interval table. Control A, selected them all, um, hold down the mouse and drag them over to the interval. Uh, doesn't want to put them in the symbol group, just the interval group, drop them in. So this is why I kept all the chromatic symbols here um, because these were chromatic intervals as well. And I can scroll down and you can see some of them don't line up. Let's get rid of those. It's not strictly required, but I selected them all just by um, dragging the, the mouse down while it was selected and clear selected cells. And now I have a scale with intervals table for just the, the symbols I, I selected, G4 through C6 and intervals. I don't consider this representation symbol and interval um, a reusable component, so there is no save button here. It will be used in the next page. So I go to the next page, scale with intervals, load it from the, from the scale intervals page, click the button, and there they are. Now at this point in time, we can delete um, so we have buttons to, to clear selected cells or delete selected cells. I'm not going to do either of those just yet. Um, so these are intervals. What we were, were interested in, you can see it over here in my tuning um, page, uh, we want frequencies, not intervals. And so this interface allows us to convert these intervals to a reference uh, frequency. Um, the typical reference frequency is A4. Um, modern day A4 is 440. Um, whatever you decide to use for your reference note, it has to be one of the notes that are in the scale with intervals um, that you're using. Otherwise, it has no way of, of making a reference. And that's another reason for not deleting notes out before you get to this step. So I'm going to choose A4. I'm going to set it to 440. It's 440 hertz. And create a scale with frequencies. And pretty much all it's done is it's found the 440 uh, normalized everything and then multiplied this column by that 440. And so you can see A4 is 440. So everything's fine. I might save this as a chromatic scale. So let's give it a name. Um, G4 equal temperament um, chromatic scale. And I'll skip a description for now. Do a save and let's put that in my scales directory. And you see I've given you scales for all of the sample tunings um, that were provided with the program. And we're going to call this um, 
g4 equal temperament and it's not a NAF tuning yet so it's just a chromatic scale and now it's saved um, we're going to make make a NAF and a Native American flute and if you recall we're only going to make it with these notes. Um, so I'm going to do a little transposing in my head. We're going to, to do, instead of an F sharp as this show, shows, we're going to do a G. So it's essentially a half, well it is, a half step above each one of these note representations. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to just leave the notes I want and delete the ones I don't want. So um, I don't want these two notes here. They're, they're not part of the scale. So the minor third for, for a G is a B flat. Um, the B, B isn't in the scale. The D flat isn't in the scale. The E flat is, that's that extra note that's not in a pentatonic minor, but is in the minor scale. E isn't in the scale. And G flat isn't in the scale. And we said we we're only going to do a one octave tuning, so I'm just going to drag across all of these second octave notes and delete them and now we're down to what we wanted the seven notes um, I can save that for reuse um, and normally I, I might but for now let's let's not um, and so we will use it just by and I've skipped ahead to two pages to the final page um, by loading it here but let's go back and create a fingering pattern. Now there is no fingering pattern provided with the samples uh, for a five hole flute. So let's create one. The first thing you need to do is tell the program how many holes. Well, it's a five holer. And so we create new. What it does is it just creates one hole pattern. Um, a fingering pattern has to have at least one finger pattern. Um, I'm selecting that, and now I'm going to the insert rows below it, or above it, it wouldn't matter, and we want to insert six more. We have seven, seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, if we go back to this page, The first note um, is all holes covered. Then um, kind of keep these these note patterns in mind that I've selected, and we'll just go and enter them. So we're going to create a tuning. The first one has all the holes covered. Just click on each hole I want to cover. The second one has that. Let's check to see if I've got it right. Yes. And then we open hole and then a cross fingering hole and then we work our way up. So open hole, cross fingering hole, scroll down to the rest. And that is our fingering pattern um, that we just transcribed from Clint Goss's page. Um, let's give that a name. So that's a G G4. Actually, it's it's not. It's just a um, Native American flute five hole minor 
scale of minor um, fingering. And we'll put in here, it's a pentatonic minor plus the minor sixth. Which I, I use a lot in my playing, so I, I like to have that in there. And let's save it. And now we go into the fingerings um, directory. Again, these are with the samples. And in this one, I only provided the six hole fingering that I use with my flutes. So now let's um, call this a NAF five hole. minor fingering so now it exists for reuse let's go now to the final page and I should comment here um, that you could start on the final page if you had reusable components that you could load from the scale or from the fingerings, which we now have, or if you had a tuning file that you just wanted to edit by adding a note or deleting a note or changing the values of the note, the, the simple scenarios that um, I brought up looking at the, the main program. So let's load these, this fingering that we've just created and at this point, the central panel, which is the final panel that we want um, the program to yield, doesn't know how many holes there are in this, this tuning uh, because there is really no requirement that we've loaded this fingering. We could have done it from scratch or gotten it out of an XML file. So we'll tell it that we want a five hole tuning and we're going to create a new tuning. It's not loaded from an XML file. And again, we get this one row. And in the same fashion that we did before, I'm going to do drag and drop. So I select a, se a select a row, control A for the whole thing, hold the mouse down and drag it across. And now it's made full notes for all of those um, those scale notes. It hasn't filled in the, the fingerings which we're going to get from over here. Again, I click on one of the fingerings, control A, hold the mouse button, drag it across, and we have what looks like, um, I don't see any errors, a full tuning. The save button is not enabled yet because we haven't given it a name. So I require that um, in all cases these files have names. So we are going to call this um, a G4. Um, it's equal temperament now and it has some holes in it. So five holes. Um, it's for Native American flute and it's a minor tuning. It's not a chromatic tuning. I have left out quite a few notes. And fingering pattern from Flutopedia. Okay, and now we can save that. And whenever you make changes to any of the components um, that we've looked at, looked at and created, and notice I can bounce back and forth and nothing is, is lost from previous pages, you need to do a save. As opposed to the kinds of manipulations we did in prior tutorials inside um, the main interface that works in memory, this is a separate application. It's not hot linked in in memory to, to the main application. The only way the main application knows about what we're doing is by the files that we've saved. So we're going to save this. 
We're going to save this in my tuning directory just to keep things organized. And you can see the, the six tunings that um, are provided as samples. And this now is a G4 equal temperament. So you'll come up with your own naming uh, conventions um, that allow you to identify what you're working with. And it's a NAF. And it's minor tuning, not chromatic. created. This finish button just closes closes the wizard. It doesn't nag you for doing saves because it doesn't know in which page you wanted to do that save. Um, so please do saves. Um, save your components or your tuning um, without pushing this. There won't be any going back. Once I click this, it's gone. Now let's see if it actually worked. So we're going to open Go to the tuning page, tuning folder. There is our five hole. And abracadabra, it really worked. Now, you didn't see any weights in the, the tuning file wizard. Uh, those weights were all set to one. I consider uh, the weight parameter as a as something that you want to change on the fly for the flutes that you are creating um, at the time. So it always defaults to, to ones. And I think that really covers everything I wanted to cover um, in this tutorial. Um, let's show you some useful links. Um, as always, the release page for WI Designer is found here. Um, and if you find issues with anything you're working with or feature enhancements you'd like to see, no guarantees, um, go to the issues page. Uh, the tutorials, um, the video tutorials of which this is one and check often is found here. The wiki page that includes other information on using the program here. Um, the fingering charts and in general the Flutopedia uh, link is found here. And I, I whizzed right through the temperaments page. Uh, what I consider the, the ultimate reference software for, for temperaments and scales is called Scala, and here is the home page for Scala if you're interested in really getting into the weeds. And until the next tutorial, have a, have a good day.